I think I'm a terrible woman. And I think I'm an even worse feminist. I mean, I want equal rights, but I hate how hard I have to work in order to get my equal share of things. That's a good part. But I enjoy songs which you might judge me for because they ridicule and mock and objectify my gender. It's a little funny because I like vibing to them. And I wouldn't, uh, I mean, I could have it other way, but I just can't. There are days when I want to rebel, but eight out of 10 times, I dress up for the smallest things like going to a grocery store and I frankly enjoy it. And I have this secret fondness for fashion and boy bands and I don't know, chick flicks. I hate that they are called chick flicks, but I have this fascination for them. And it's just feel like I'm doing something wrong. Like my feminism is at play here and it's also confusing. Hi everyone, welcome to Kitabi Cabins. My name is Bani hai. and in this video, I want to talk to you about two books that actually changed or helped build my perspective on feminism. Why this is very important for me is because as a woman, who identifies and as a feminist, I've really struggled with the thoughts that I'm a terrible feminist and I do so on a daily basis. I feel like I'm a very, very bad woman and a very, very, very bad feminist. And I think these two books really helped me address those issues. The first book that I want to talk about is The Mother of All Questions by Rebecca Solnit. She's also the woman who wrote the essay Men Explain Things to Me. I discovered it very recently and it changed my opinion on a lot of things. But what I really like about the book is how, how beautifully she addresses all the questions women have been asked time and again in their lives. Why don't you marry? Why don't you have kids? Why are you wearing that? I don't think it's appropriate for you to be talking and walking around like this. And she answers all those questions with such finesse and grace. And you want to have that capability that she portrays in this book to answer every question with the same respect that she does and yet deliver the point home. And this is a book I would recommend to everyone I know in my life. It's about the little things we miss out on when there is no feminism. And I think that is something that makes this book extremely, extremely special. The next book that I want to talk about is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. This is a book that I know a lot of people won't like because of how lightly it might explain to you things about feminism. This is a book which will probably make you feel all right from the very first introduction page because it will resonate the thoughts you've had for a really long time. I love pink. I love wearing dresses. I like dressing up. I am the girl next door. I am overtly feminine. And Yet, I am a feminist. What I really, really liked about the book was the ease with which Roxane Gay comforts you and she says, hey, this, this, this is also feminism. There are so many quotable lines from the book and one of them actually spoke about how feminism is a choice. If a woman decides that she does not want to be a feminist, it is entirely okay, that's her choice to make. But it is my choice to fight for her because I believe in it. It is my choice to stand up for her rights and for her, of course. And I think these two books are very comforting. They talk about violence on women, the inequalities we face, and despite most of the people in our circle being woke, us having to still stand for our rights and sometimes need help, necessary help in realizing them. And that is one reason why I would recommend everyone who's watching this video to get these books read them, reread them, gift them to your friends, gift them to your parents, gift them to your family members, gift them to everyone you know and read them together, discuss them out in the open. So this was my recommendation for this episode. I hope you liked it and I will be back with another recommendation for you in the next episode. Until then, happy reading. Bye bye.